In today's episode, Joe asks, how do you conduct research for a new content marketing project? Where do you start? What steps do you take and what systems do you use to organize your research and findings? Well, it really depends on the project, right? And how much depth I need to go into. If we're talking about a simple project like a, a narrative blog post uh, in something that I have domain expertise in already, uh, maybe, you know, some basic facts, uh, some SEO keyword research, that's about it. And the rest will kind of take care of itself. That's, you know, uh, about all that you would really need. On the other hand, if you're talking about, you know, a massive project or some kind of a complex piece of work, like fiction, for example, um, set in a period of time you don't know well, uh, you're going to be doing weeks or months of research on everything from apparel of the time period to you know, world events at the time, whatever it is that you need to make sense of something uh, for something like a webinar uh, or a presentation you're going to be framing it out using some kind of content framework uh, there's many many to choose from uh, and then building the pieces like that in fact i'll bring up a example here this is the uh a mind map right i'm working on this for a webinar tomorrow no thursday um a mind map of how to outline uh, how how to uh, think about natural language processing and it's an outline but it's an outline with movable pieces and i have four major areas i need to fill out i have the problem uh, statement the impact of it the general solution uh, which is broken into a sort of why what how and then a specific solution or, or some examples and case studies Having a framework of some kind for larger pieces of content is absolutely essential in order to uh, to give yourself, a, I guess, a checklist, if you will, of things to not forget. Right. So, this particular framework is adapted from uh, originally a sales framework by a guy named Dan Kennedy, and uh, you know, problem, agitation, general solution, the specific solution, and. The idea is for things like long sales letters or landing pages, you would use this to essentially get somebody so worked up and, and concerned, and then uh, you tell them how to fix their problem. And of course, the solution is you know buy your stuff. That framework by itself is actually a really good narrative framework for uh, a piece of content marketing, a, a more complex, larger piece. So from process perspective, uh, once you have the topic, um, you then start to frame out the the intellectual stuff that you're going to need, the materials, the raw goods, um, tools like uh, this is Mind Node for the Macintosh, um, but there are you know, many, many mind mapping apps, some web-based ones, uh, are a good place to to build out your outline and organize it. Um, I like this for organization. Now, once you've done the organization, then it's time to start drafting it. And so uh, there are tools. Uh, Evernote is one. Uh, I use one called Joplin, which is a markdown-based tool. And you can see here it's... It, you can keep your uh, a notebook of stuff, and then you can keep uh, individual pages of of content and graphics and stuff, clippings from uh, the web, for example. All of these would be things that you'd want to have available uh, as you do your research. And then, depending on the tool, and depending on the output uh, you're going after, uh, you may use a tool like Joplin to go straight to a blog post, um, or you may end up using a tool, um, Scrivener, for example, uh, if you're building something like a full-size ebook. Um, so when you're thinking about conducting research or content marketing, it really comes down to what's the goal of the project uh, and what is the expected deliverable, the expected outcome. If it's an infographic, you're going to also need to have things like brand style guides, um, colors, uh, acceptable and non-acceptable imagery. Um, if you're working with a creative team, there, there will probably be a creative brief involved at some point, and you'll have to fill one of those out and make sure that you have everything that you need documented for the creative team to be able to do their work. Um, the more detail you have for something like that, uh, the better the project's going to go. So uh, most of the time for the, the best uh, outputs I've had from from creative briefs have included things like me what, sitting down and whiteboarding out kind of what I have in mind and then 
obviously the creative person lending their actual talent as opposed to my you know, horrific whiteboard cartoons um, to turning it into something interpretable, but also being willing to have them say, you know, that's a bad idea. <laughs> and, and then proposing something else. You have to be open to that as well. Um, for things like video, storyboarding, one of the things you're going to have to do is storyboard out what you want to have happen in the video before you shoot it. Uh, unless you're doing something like, like you know, the, this style of video where you're just sitting down and talking. Uh, but for the most part, even an, uh, an episode of like this, there's still notes. There's still uh, pieces that you gather up. If you have no other framework for content marketing besides, you know, like... Um, a why, what, how. Uh, you can also do, you know, six W's: who, what, where, when, why, and how. What, what are the pieces that you need to gather in order to be able to answer all those questions? And the larger and more complex a piece of content is, the more you're going to need a, a, something like that in order to make sure you're not missing any pieces. Um, the last thing on this is that domain expertise is probably one of the most important pieces to have and to know where you are. When it comes to the topic, if you are making a piece of content that for which you have substantial domain expertise, um, you will need to do research to essentially to validate, to verify, and to to cite uh, facts that you make. Um, it always helps to have some third party uh, references and studies and things, and again, store that in a system like MindNode, for example. Um, if you don't have domain expertise, you have to build that. And that is a much larger, bigger thing to do. Um, that involves doing a whole bunch of Googling, reading uh, papers, particularly on like Google Scholar, uh, getting up to speed on following experts in that field on Twitter, for example, and reading and ingesting their stuff and getting a sense for who are the credible folks within that field. Um, and then as you build your content, you're going to be synthesizing a lot of that information while maintaining all your citations and such. Um, building domain expertise takes a long time. Uh, if you don't know a field well, expect it to take a minimum, a minimum of 90 days to gather the basics and to start to understand what is important and what's not. When I started putting together a newsletter uh, for the coronavirus, it took me a good 30 days just to even figure out who was who and then following them and then sharing stuff and then reading a whole bunch. And then uh, finally, by the time I was ready to, to you know, begin sharing on a more regular basis, I felt like okay, I had a good enough lay of the land and a good enough baseline of all the facts that uh, I could put together a newsletter that would be still be a good roundup of the content with the disclaimer that I am not in any way shape or form an epidemiologist a virologist any of these things I'm just a person who collects this information curates it and, and puts it together but give yourself 90 days to build domain expertise it takes that long so good question uh, if you have follow-up questions leave them in the comments box below subscribe to the YouTube channel and the newsletter I'll talk to you soon take care Want help solving your company's data analytics and digital marketing problems? Visit trustinsights.ai today and let us know how we can help you.